Hi folks, quick update on the new shop. I wanted to share a bunch. But thank you for all the feedback on the last video, uh, but let's dive right in. So the spot that Judd's in right there will be what you see in the bottom right corner here, which will be a, uh, an office for me to use with a little table, uh, got a little conference table inside of it. And above that, you'll see a room, a little rectangular room. That'll be in the corner right there. That'll be what we use for uh, sort of a dedicated video room. So we'll be able to have a little bit better controlled lighting um, and a little bit of sound isolation in there. We'll also inevitably do a lot of filming elsewhere, but I wanted a spot that I could use, um, again, for dedicated filming. We will end up pulling away that, or ripping out that man door and replacing it, as you can see here, with a roll-up door, just like we've got over on that side. Uh, the bathrooms that you see right there will stay as is in front of me. And then we may not build everything out here you see, but we're gonna get it at least approved uh, from a permitting standpoint. Right here on the left will be a small conference room. You can barely see we, Jared and I used some string just to sort of string out the rooms to get an idea for size. That room would end where that piece of black tape is. Right there, it's actually a little bit small, but, but I mean, no, we gotta work with what we got here. And then the larger room on the end, which is basically the existing format you see with the line running uh, right along that the marked line there will be our training classroom, which I'm super excited about. Uh, we'll have that existing roll-up door. And the idea is that we can use that roll-up door to get equipment all the way over to that room, again, by going out into the shop and around. We, we thought about it, it didn't make sense to be able to pull equipment through the center, central hallway in what is effectively an, an office portion, if that makes sense. We're going to leave the ceilings open. We're going to epoxy the floors. I'll talk about that in a second. And then sort of a traditional uh, finish here with a stud, uh, you know, insulate these, a stud drywall. Um, and I'm working with an architect right now and getting a quote on that. Um, I have put together a budget for all of this stuff because that's the you know, appropriate and smart thing to do. Um, you know, there are some things that we knew we were going to spend money on. There are some things where I'm obviously having to think about what makes sense. And, you know, the thing that um, I have to keep in mind is there's some stuff you really kind of have to do now. Um, and I don't want to imply that we're overextending ourselves. We're, we're not. But um, I like to be frugal. And one of the reasons I got to be in a position to be able to afford this building was by, generally speaking, not spending a lot of money. And now is the kind of time where you think about what makes sense to invest in the building. Uh, on that note, the floors, I had actually gone back and forth on the epoxy and the floors. I found a very reputable place um, in the area who came down and basically said, hey, uh, January is a really slow month for us. We'll give you a good price. And the price is quite good. And um, I think I'll share all this stuff or more details of this stuff later. Uh, we haven't you know, inked that deal yet. So um, more to come. Um, I took the advice of many people, which was it, it is foolish to spend the money dividing this room. Let's just um, let's just put the fab stuff over here. It works. It makes total sense. The, the, the roll up doors and having more work area here for larger fab stuff totally makes sense. And, you know, the reason I kind of like having this separated was with this idea of um, you know, the working on the car projects or just other stuff, but that stuff doesn't make me money. And, and so to, to spend the kind of money to, to demise this room into two um, doesn't make sense. And so I'm, now I'm actually super excited. So we'll have a lot of extra space in this room. My other thought is that if we ended up later getting something like just making this up like a sheet metal break or shear, that stuff doesn't make dust. So it could say go in the back half of this room uh, and that would be, I think, acceptable. We do need to put a, a roll up door in here so that we can get, oops, that we can get a forklift in between the two rooms. And then um, up at the top, if you'll notice, these two rooms are not totally separated. There's a little gap at the top. What do you guys think? If Let's just, just assume that we are making a pretty good amount of dust in this room with plasma, welding, grinding. Um, you know, I, I want to do this right. So I'm thinking we need to do more to seal that off. Um, how much? I don't know. You know, is it as simple as some, you know, code uh, safe and approved, um, you know, plastic type wrap? Or should, do we actually need to frame it in? Uh, I'm, I'm working with, again, a contractor on that, but I'd love your opinion. 
Uh, we are gonna paint all of the walls. And again, that's something where it just needs done. They need to be a little bit brighter and uh, it'll look really nice. Ironically, that phone call was one of the LED companies I put an email out to. Um, very controversial subject and one of those topics that I really dislike because there's just too many options. But um, I was initially impressed with the T5s, but I've heard so many negative comments from people about bulb life not being great and just not, just not you know, the only drawback I'm really hearing about LEDs is they may be too expensive. We're working with the local power company to see if we can get uh, a rebate to make those make sense, but I think um, I think we're going to go LED. And there's another con construction project in town that just did this, and that's actually be proving to be, I think, a helpful example of the type to go with, as well as uh, again, sort of playing that cost and rebate game. Um, s since we are not doing the fab in this room, and since the uh, epoxy coat was a was a good price per square foot. We're going to do this whole room. Um, you're doing just half of it. Just doesn't make sense. It doesn't seem like it would look right. And that's another one of those things where you, you really um, you really want to do it before you move in uh, and start putting stuff down on the pad. Um, obviously, we need a lot of just cleaning to do here. That'll um, you know help it look better along with the paint on the walls. And then lastly, I am eating my words because. Uh, I told myself, let's just do Copper Airlines. Holy cow, way too expensive. I'm a little embarrassed, like seriously way too expensive. So I think we're gonna do, um, you know, something something like a, a large diameter, inch and a half, two inch, maybe something like a rapid air. Um, full circle loop would be great to help with um, dead zones, but a lot more to learn on that. Honestly, I'll probably start off with just our existing compressor and some manual lines, um, because that's the kind of decision that I wanna do uh, the, the right way. There's a, another a lot of lessons learned there about having them slope back um, to the compressor and the drain spots and all that. Here you can see our 440 that showed up a couple days ago. This is our second 440, uh, which we picked up because of the training program. For me, the whole point, the whole goal was making sure students had uh, you know time on the machine. So we're, our goal is to have two students per machine. We'll have a couple 440s and actually a couple of 1100s again for our sort of in-house CNC training program. And so lots of good stuff to come folks. Uh, Merry Christmas. Hope everyone has a great and safe holiday. Take care and I'll see you soon.